I love nothing more than to get out on the mountain and, and just climb, spend every day, every moment that I can on it. I'm Nate Smith. I'm a 19-year-old college student, and I'm an avid climber. It's my passion, my love. And my goal is to become the youngest to summit all of the seven summits, the highest point of each continent. I spent this past three months planning an expedition down to Mexico that I was going to lead and guide to go climb Pico de Orizaba. It's an 18,500 foot volcano, um, the tallest point in Mexico, the third highest in North America. I do have a girlfriend, Marianne Becknell. Prior to uh, our departure for a trip to Mexico to go climb Pico de Orizaba, um, she and I broke things off because she's my climbing partner. She climbs with me and we're finding that we actually climb better when we're together than when we're not together. Nathan seemed to have um, not brought along his original birth certificate with the raised seal. So there might be trouble getting into Mexico, and even if we do get into Mexico, there might be trouble getting out of Mexico. For Mexico and for Canada, you don't need a passport, and we all applied for our passports, but the passports hadn't arrived yet. Electronic devices must be turned off. We were supposed to just travel from Salt Lake City to Mexico City, and it ended up including me traveling from Salt Lake City to Mexico City to a holding cell in immigration and then back to Houston, Texas uh, to reunite with my mom. Hi, Robin. Hi, it's Marianne. Hi, have you talked to Nate recently? Have you talked to him at all today? Uh, he, he's, we're in Mexico City. He couldn't get into Mexico City. Where's Nate? <laughs> That's why Houston. Why? He didn't have his original birth certificate, and so at customs in Mexico, they wouldn't let him in. Are you kidding me? No. We're trying to stop Nate's bags from going back to Houston and following him on a wild goose chase halfway around the world. Traveling's a bitch. I mean, just this whole day has been hell. Yeah. This day has just been. Yesterday was hell. Getting home. Going through customs again. Yeah. In the United States. They let me buy with my driver's license. Yeah. Because the guy here took my birth certificate copy. They like took me to the gate, they completely strip searched me and like everything. Treated me like shit, threw me on the plane, closed the door on my face. Like, they were shitty. Nate and Kurt left the, the uh, hotel this morning to head up to the Puebla airport to pick up the bags. Hello, English. Um, I have three baggages that arrived on the flight last night. Did they not arrive? It, the flight didn't come in. And apparently they weren't there. Apparently that flight that they were supposed to be on to be here yesterday got canceled. And maybe they're on today's flight. We have no idea. I called Continental and because it has an AM tag number on it, they can't look it up. You can tell he's a little on edge. He wants things to go smoothly, but... Can't complain. We're having a good time. It's like, you know, none of them want to take the blame. I don't think they're like lost, lost. Oh, I don't know. It's just going to be a day or two before they probably, just because things are probably still a mess in Houston and they'll dig them up and be like, oh, we've been looking for those. Finally here, and you know we've got only so far till we go to the mountain, and the mountain is just so beautiful. It's so gorgeous. I'm really excited. Usually, the day you wake up after your first night's stay, you get driven by a four-wheel drive ride to the trailhead. Uh, we weren't ready. We didn't have the gear. We didn't have our food. We didn't have the gear. And at this point, we were kind of wondering what to do. So we spent that day doing a training hike, where we went and hiked with this little peak in the just behind serving lawn. Is there a stinger in there? No. Well, I'm watching it grow. Sweet. <laughs> So we start cutting back and forth and realize that we were in quite a bit of trouble. We were in this dense, dense hillside of cacti. It's out. I was all the way in this hand. All of it now. Yeah. Oh. How's the hike, Mike? Whose idea was this? He's off the team. He's moving up. 
And when we got back, Senor Reyes saw that we were all cut up. In fact, he said his stable man had been out there with their horses and had started laughing at us and came back to Senor Reyes and said, there's these Americans up in the cacti. What are they doing? Uh, they're climbing and they shouldn't be there. Um, <laughs> At that point, I think Senor Reyes had a lot of doubt whether or not he should take us up to the base of Orzava, wondering if we could get up that mountain just because we couldn't even coordinate getting up this this uh, this hillside for a training hike. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah, you look like you need a shower. <laughs> you need a beer. Yeah, that's exactly. All right. Well, I have to know. All right, bud. We woke up that morning and I called the airline and the airline at that point had officially declared our luggage lost. I made the decision as a, the expedition leader to go for the mountain as long as we could find enough substantial gear. You got sunglasses. sunglasses. Oh. Great. I'm just a, a big man. Hey, <laughs> now it fits. It's magical. <laughs> <laughs> We're on some trail trying to get to the trailhead of uh, Pico de Orzava and it's a four-wheel drive trail and we're in the back of a pickup truck. It's like a prison wagon. <laughs> but, it's a little bouncy. A little bit. So how's 14.5 feel? It feels really good. I'm feeling really, really well. Really, really good. Um, it's that damn altitude getting in your head now. I, I have the IQ right now of a codfish. It's one step below what I used to be a parrot. Instead of spending a night at 14,000, then a night at 16,000, and then going for the summit, we would go straight to a high camp from the trailhead at about 15,500 feet, and then go for the summit that night. Bienvenidos a mi casa! With what he has in this altitude, he, you know, you're chilly. And to be honest, I'm missing, I, you know, you have some of my layers. Yeah. I'm chilly. Wait, make the summit tonight? Go for the summit tonight. Like, as in leave tonight about 3 No, as in leave tonight around probably 1 o'clock. This is uh, 1.30 a.m. on Sunday morning. It's very cold degrees, <laughs> but uh, we'll make do. We're at probably just below 17,000 feet. On a vertical pledge summit push. At about 18,000 feet, about 500 vertical away from the summit, I collapsed on my ice axe on a 45 degree angle slope and caught myself and started coughing up water and, uh, and mucus. I had an extreme headache, I was delirious, I was having trouble completing my steps. We knew that Kurt, Marion, and Greg had been able to push up on the summit. <laughs> summit camp. So this is pretty cool, I guess. Yeah. On the summit. I wasn't in any condition to know that I should descend. At this point, I had a goal. I was going to get to the top. But two different Mexican guides had passed us and had already been telling us to descend because they knew that we were sick. Mike made the decision to give up his summit bid and take me down the mountain. I understand that the goal was for me to go down to Mexico and reach the summit of Pico de Orizaba to prove that I could climb an altitude, but under the conditions, um, I had pulmonary edema, it's something that was out of my control. I want it all so quick, and I'm going to have to accept the fact that it's not going to happen overnight. I've learned a lot of lessons in this past trip, and most of which are that I, you can't rush an ascent on a peak of that size. I, I feel that I can go and complete the seven summits. Um, I've planned them. I've trained for them, and now I'm ready to go and climb the seven summits.